<laughs> Welcome to another episode of the Throne of Angels video blog. As always, I am your host, Derek Osborne. Join once again, Tim Korkleski. Bye, Tim Korkleski. <laughs> ah, today we're going to look at uh, basically three pieces from Frontier Wargaming. Who, uh, George, was so kind to step up and say, Yeah, man, I will sponsor one of your tables. Uh, and threw in these three pieces for our table two, the, the graveyard. Basically our Garici themed uh, table for Wrath of Kings. Yes. Potentially Warhammer or anything else we need to get a graveyard for. Medieval Gothic. Yeah, Medieval Gothic. So we've got three pieces we're going to look at today. We have the Blacksmith Hut. We have the Ruined Gothic Chapel, which actually is not available on his website yet. I'm sure it'll be here in the near future. And then the Medieval House. He sent a couple of these out, but... We don't need to look at the same thing twice, right? Not at all. Right. No, it's right there. It's right It's right there. Exactly. So we're going to take a look at uh, a little bit of detail on these things and uh, kind of how they, they roll out. So these all are, um, well, these two are his textured versions. I don't think he has a textured version of the Meaningful House. Simple, easy to put together. I actually just checked the pictures online and put them together based off of what I was seeing for what was on his website. We'll take a look at the Blacksmith Hut really quick. Because this is the one that's actually, it's a very static piece. Uh, the roof doesn't come off. It literally is a one piece. Yeah. Yeah, sing, single piece of terrain. It's got a nice little anvil and a hammer on top there. Uh, however, this is really simple and easy. Great for blocking line of sight. Obviously, I'm not sticking anything in it, even though I could have, if I wanted to, I could have left the roof sections uh, unglued like I did with the Gothic Chapel. The house itself actually has a roof that comes off. I'll show you in a second. But there is room inside, right? The, uh, the interior I could have used if I chose to leave the roof sections unglued. However, I glued those just to show that as an option. Um, obviously, we'll revisit this whole project later on when we get Table 2 complete and everything's all painted up and it looks pretty. Yes. Tim, what do you think of the blacksmith hut? I like it. Uh, the one thing I definitely like about it is the fact that the roof is shallow enough. Like Derek was saying, if you do not want to leave the roof removable, but you still want to have models that can interact with it, it's flat enough to where the models can stand on the top and then jump off and hit something. Yeah, and exactly. So. Uh, it wouldn't be terribly difficult to put a ladder on the back side or you know, basically set up rules for it to be climbable, right? Some of the games we play, Dark Age uh, specifically, has rules uh, for uh, climbable terrain. So getting up on top of it, I'm not going to lose a model as I would if I put it, say, on top of the Gothic Church. Speaking of... Let's look at the Gothic Church. So this is the nice. ruined Gothic Chapel. Um, I have not glued the door in there because I actually am not going to glue the door. I'm going to basically put them in there when I put this thing on a base because we're going to put these all of, all of these on bases. When I put it on a base, I'm going to set up a lot of basically the offcuts because George sent me all the offcuts for everything here. He said, hey, if you want to put it together like a normal one, you just have to glue these back into place. Uh, but I like the ruined side of things, so I'm going to leave it ruined. I'm going to take those offcuts and I'm going to actually use them as... as uh, basically small scatter pieces around the base and inside. I did leave both of the uh, the roof pieces unglued so I could take it apart and actually interact with it on a, uh, on a gaming level. So this thing is very detailed, right? I mean you can see that the the bricks on the side, on basically both sides, have been uh, etched into the wood. Uh, they call that rasterizing. Um, <clears throat> you'll see that there's a, a nice pretty uh, I don't even know, floral design up front that's basically beat up and destroyed. Uh, all the windows and arches uh, actually have uh, a nice filigree around them and they feel like uh, a, a true piece. Now, those of you that know me know I'm not a huge fan of, of laser cut terrain stuff because I feel it's very flat and kind of uninteresting. You step back about 10 feet, it looks like a box on the table. Exactly. The times. Right, and you know, while a box on the table I guess has its place, I don't like to play with a box on the table. So I, I like stuff that actually has some depth and some feel to it. Frontier Wargaming, George over Frontier Wargaming has done a good job at adding layers of detail and usability uh, to the stuff that he's put on the table. So Tim, your thoughts on the, uh, on the Gothic? Uh, I really like it, especially the fact that I know that the ruin set is not available yet. But uh, just the fact that the brickwork stands out to me. Um, it looks like it'd be relatively easy to just put a base coat and wash it in order to bring that brickwork out. It doesn't look like it'll take a ton of time to do. Uh, the fact that he took time to detail the floor on the inside. And the fact that the roof is easily removable. Because uh, a lot of times when you're playing a game, 
you want to be able to move parts around quickly. It doesn't look like it's too much of a process to take it apart and potentially destroy the terrain piece. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, like I said, good good frame of usability in regards to this piece. It also has enough detail on it to make me uh, want to put it on my table versus um, not putting it on my yeah. table. So, moving from <laughs> moving from that ruin. Uh, got the cathedral. We'll step into the into the house now. Obviously, I've got a little repair work that needs to be done here. That effectively is just glue not drying uh, correctly. The roof has a nice thatched uh, roof style. It comes with a bunch of individual pieces. As you can see, this is this is an each one of these is an individually cut piece. Uh, and putting it together, I'll be honest, was a little tedious. Uh, but I use clamps, so you know, I mean, I, it just took a little extra time. But it does add a fantastic layer of detail to the fact that it looks like a cedar shake roof. Yes. You know, it definitely gives it, even though it's very, very thin pieces of wood, it does add that texture and layering to it that you don't see a lot of times with a lot of MDF pieces when they make a roof. A lot of times they just etch it in there. Yeah, exactly. So it gives it more flair, a little bit better feel in my opinion. I really dig it. Plus it's also removable. So we do have a removable roof. However, the door... The door is static, right? I mean, I didn't, I didn't do anything crazy. I just glued it into place. Uh, but it does allow me to interact with the building, right? I don't have to have the door open to actually go through the door. But uh, it's, you know, nice and basic on the inside. It actually does come with furniture. It comes with a table and a couple of chairs. I didn't put those together because it's not something that I would be using uh, as anything other than just stuff to get in the way. So I don't need scatter terrain on the inside of the house. However, I can interact with the house if I so choose. Yes. If I want to put a, a small unit in there and actually defend it, I can defend it. Uh, obviously, multiple different uses for the house. This, again, the beams are all rasterized. I don't know if he's got um, you know, a version that actually has etched uh, or rasterized brick uh, texture for the building itself. But the beams are all beautiful. You know, Very simple, elegant design. Uh, I, I dig this piece, Tim. What, what do you think? Yeah, I like it as well. Um, I like the fact that uh, he actually took the time on the building itself to make all the uh, individual uh, wooden planking on the outside in order to give it that extra depth and texture to make it not look like a box. So that's definitely something that, you know, for me is bonus points. And then again, even if uh, he doesn't have a set that's coming out with any type of a texture on the inside here, that could always easily be done with a little bit of Elmer's glue and some sand to just uh, give it a little bit of extra. You want to stuck it up, right? Yeah. yeah. And so. as, as an aside, even though I assembled all of these, these are single pieces, right? So this, this wood texture is a single piece that actually fits in a box frame with this single piece and this single piece. And then these are single pieces, so it, it frames together. It's, it's just a quick, simple little puzzle. Uh, a little glue, like I said, I use these little alligator clamps I got at Home Depot. Very simple, quick, and easy to put it together. It took me maybe 20 minutes to get assembled, uh, with the exception of the roof. The roof took me a little bit of time. Um, I say the roof itself because I wanted to let the glue dry. Probably took me a little over an hour uh, as I was putting it together. Now, it does fit basically down on the beams, and it locks down as long as you get it in the right place. So there, as you see, now it's locked down, no movement. And you've got a nice, solid little piece. Again, three pieces for the Garici graveyard table. Uh, any yeah. final thoughts, Tim? Uh, no, it's definitely, for uh, what we're doing with it, it's a fantastic start. Um, this, you know, for the terrain requirements, essentially, for Wrath of Kings, which is the focus on this one, it already meets three fantastic pieces that will really help flesh out a board. Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. So, there you have it. Um, three pieces for our graveyard table, for uh, for our Garici uh, Wrath of Kings table from Frontier Wargaming. George, thank you very much. This stuff is outstanding. I had a great time putting it together. Go check it out. Link below. Ha, ha, ha.